if we have not had the chance to meet yet, my name is Caleb Lyle Kunze, and I'm the youth dude here at the church, and we are thankful that each and every single one of you are here because Ignite is a place for you to belong. Ignite is a place where you can be who God has created you to be. You don't have to pretend to try and be someone else. You don't have to try and fake it till you make it. You get to be who God has made you to be. And Ignite is a place where you belong. I really believe that each and every single one of you, even if it's your very first time here, we're glad that you're here, by the way, you belong. This is a family here at Ignite, and we're thankful that you're here and excited to share life with you and to do life alongside of you. Going forward into the future, I encourage you to start bringing your Bibles. If you have a Bible, I'm going to encourage you to bring it on Wednesdays because every single week we are going to be looking at least at a verse or multiple verses or a story in the Bible, and it can be really helpful for you to follow along, and I think it can be really impactful for you to follow along and like highlight in your Bible or underline in your Bible. And maybe you're like, Caleb, that sounds awesome, but one thing, I don't have a Bible. That's okay. If you don't have a Bible and you would like your very own personal Bible to keep, talk to me, or even better, to be honest, talk to your small group leader tonight in their small group and say, hey, I don't have a Bible, and I will make sure that we have a Bible for you by next week for sure, okay? Um, Or the week after, one of those two. (laughs) Um, But we're going to get you a Bible. We think that you should have a Bible for your own, and let us know if you need that. Uh, God's Word is alive. It's active. It's powerful. It transforms us, and we want to be looking at what his word says. And that's what we're going to be doing going forward here this evening and into the future. Uh, But before we jump into tonight's theme of come and see, can you play, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, we surrender this time to you, God. We ask that you show up, help us open our ears and our eyes and our minds to hear your truth, your word for us tonight, Jesus. We ask that you show up and be present here and help us to not be distracted and help us to experience your love, maybe for the very first time ever. Um, Help us to encounter you, Jesus, in a really cool and amazing way tonight. We love you so much. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Have you ever done something? Have you ever seen something? Have you ever experienced experienced something so wild, so crazy, so like unbelievable that you just had to tell somebody else. You're like, you will not believe it. If I didn't have a picture for picture proof, you wouldn't believe it. Or if I didn't have a video of this crazy thing happening, no one would have believed that it actually happened. Well, there's a few stories in Caleb's life that this is true, where I couldn't contain myself. I had to tell people, you got to come check this out. It is too crazy. It is too wild to even believe it. But I have picture proof that I'm going to show you all tonight which is kind of crazy. Um, And maybe it's not that you've witnessed something, but maybe it's been like something good in your life. Maybe some good news. You passed a test. You got an A. You passed your driver's test. You got accepted into the college of your dreams, or you harvested that awesome buck that you've been chasing. You bought your first vehicle, and you just couldn't contain the excitement. You had to tell somebody, come and see this. You got to come and check this out. Well, here's the first one for me. I have two of them. One, this is, this is a big moment for me, okay? Um, some of you maybe don't know this, but I'm a huge Star Wars freak. You can call me a freak because I love Star Wars. A geek, a nerd, all of it. I am a Star Wars guy. And I was once, as I too often sadly do, was eating a bag of chips, okay? I was just eating a bag of chips, and I pulled out a potato chip, barbecue Lay's potato chip. And I was like... You have got to be kidding me. You are not going to believe this. I literally took a picture of this chip because this chip looked exactly like the Millennium Falcon. 
Now, some of you are like, what the heck is a Millennium Falcon? But I want to first show you the picture, okay? Here's my Snapchat picture, and it says, this chip dot, dot, dot looks like the Millennium Falcon in Caleb fashion with 12,000 exclamation points. Now, if you don't know what the Millennium Falcon looks like, I have a side-by-side. This is the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, Han Solo, Chewie's ship, okay? This is the chip. It's uncanny. Look at that. It's even got like where Han and Chewie sit, the little chip over by my finger. You are literally blown away. I was like, this is the greatest day of my life, okay? That was the first one. I, had, I literally told everybody that was at the table, I was like, y'all, check out this chip. It looks exactly like the Millennium Falcon. And they all gave me the same look that you are giving me right now. Like, eh, not really. But I think it does. The second one, the second thing to learn about me, I love board games, I love board games. Me and Chris have played a ton of board games. We'll have friends over to play board games. We'll play board games, just the two of us. Last night we played a game called Everdell. Really intense, we love board games, it's fun. One of my favorite board games to play is Catan. Catan, I love it. You like have a map and you roll dice to see which resources you gather to build things, you try and get victory points. Well, once when I was in college, we were at a men's retreat, so a bunch of guys got together from college and we were at a cabin and we were playing Catan. True story, my cousin rolled the dice. I'm telling you, you would not believe me if I told you if I did not have a picture The dice stuck on its corner after he rolled. Now you can see there's kind of a texture on like the the tablecloth, but he literally just like rolled the dice and it stopped on its corner. We didn't like try and set it there. It literally stopped on its corner and we paused. We were like, do not touch the table. Everybody come and look at this. You're not going to believe this. This is crazy that you wouldn't believe it if you didn't have picture proof. There is a similar story in the Bible, a similar story where this lady experiences something that she was like, you have to come and see this. You have to come and experience this. You're not going to believe it until you come and check it out for yourself. See, in my story, in these stories, I couldn't help but contain it and say, like, you got to come look at this. You got to come see this because it's crazy. And this woman has the same exact experience. In the Bible, in John chapter 4, which is in the New Testament, so Jesus' time frame, John chapter 4, Jesus and his 12 disciples are walking, and they walk to a town or kind of an area called Samaria. An area called Samaria. Everybody say that. Area called Samaria. Fun to say. They go to this area called Samaria, which by itself is crazy. So Jesus was a Jew, and the disciples were Jewish, and they didn't associate with people from Samaria. Jews and Samaritans hated each other, despised each other, even more than Packers and Vikings fans. They, like, hated each other's guts. But Jesus like, hey, we're going to go through Samaria. And Jesus and his disciples, they go to a well, and the disciples are like, hey, we're going to go get some food. And they go into town to grab some food. And Jesus is at this well where you get water. And it says that it was noon, lunchtime. And it says that this woman comes to the well at noon. And this is a really important little kind of like nugget. Why was it crazy that this woman went to the well at noon? Why? See, women would go to the well to gather water. That was pretty normal. That was pretty typical. But they would always go early in the morning because it was cooler then. Over in Israel, in that area, it was like hot. So they would always go in the early morning, but this woman wasn't able to go early in the morning. And there's some thoughts behind why, but more than likely, she was an outcast. The other women didn't want to be associated with her. They kicked her out. They said, we don't want you around here. So she had to go during the hot of the day when the sun was at its highest, baking down, hot, 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 and she had to walk to this well, and she meets Jesus, and Jesus starts a conversation with her. And through this conversation, we come to find out that this woman had been married five times, and she was living with a guy who she wasn't married to which could be some of the reason why she was seen as an outcast, because this lady moved from man to man to man to man, husband to husband to husband, and 
she probably was seen as, hey, we, we need to like disassociate from you. So she finds out, or Jesus finds out and tells her, hey, you've been married five times. The guy you're living with, you're not married to. And she's like, how did you know that? And the story goes on and Jesus tells her, I am the savior of the world. And in that moment, Jesus extends to her an invitation Earlier when he's talking with her, he says, you're coming to this well to drink water, but if you drink from the well of life, the water that I have, living water, you'll never be thirsty again. And Jesus wasn't talking about physical, actual water, but what he was talking about was Jesus himself. The key, the gift of eternal life. It's pretty amazing that he extends this to this woman who is seen as less than. Women at that time frame were already seen as less than. But she was an outcast, so she was less than, less than. And Jesus says to this woman, it doesn't matter your past, it doesn't matter your brokenness, it doesn't matter your trauma or your hardships that you face. I'm extending to you an invitation to be in a relationship with me, the king of the universe, the savior of the world. And he extends to her an invitation. And that invitation that Jesus extends to her is the same invitation that Jesus extends to you and to me tonight. Jesus says, it doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter the things that you've gone through. It doesn't matter the brokenness or the hardships that you face. It doesn't matter the things you've looked at or done or seen or heard or said. None of that matters because I have forgiven you. I love you, I care for you, and he proved it by dying on a cross, taking the sin that we have done with him to the cross to forgive us. He extends to her the invitation. And what I find so fascinating is she doesn't just receive that invitation, sit there and not do anything. She's like, I'm just gonna stay right here. But what's crazy is in John chapter four, Verse 28, it says this. The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran in the hot of the day. I don't know if you're a runner or not, but if you run during the hot of the day compared to at night in the evening or in the morning, it makes a really big difference. This lady books it back to town. She's like, I gotta go and tell other people. So she ran back to the village telling everyone Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Despite this lady's brokenness, despite the baggage that she was carrying, despite the challenging situation she was in, she knew that that invitation was for her, but she also knew that that invitation was for other people. So she runs back into town and tells everyone. What I find cool is that She didn't just tell her family like, hey guys, come and see this Jesus. He's crazy. He told me everything I ever did. She tells everybody. Remember those same people who casted her out? Those same people who had pushed her to the side? Those same people that said, hey, you're less than, less than, less than. We don't even want to be associated. We don't even want to walk to get water with you. She goes back to those people and says, you got to come check this out. You got to meet this person. He told me everything. I believe that he is the savior of the world. You got to come and look at him. You got to come and see. You got to come and experience his goodness. You see, it wasn't just about the invitation to her, but she took that invitation and she went and invited everybody that she could because she had experienced something that was life-changing. She had experienced an interaction, an encounter with the savior of the world who died on a cross, who rose again three days later, who did miracles, who was sinless, who was perfect. She encountered this man, and she's like, I need to have everybody come and experience who this Jesus is. So tonight... I want to invite you all, I want to extend an invitation to you all to meet somebody. Maybe you already know who Jesus is. Maybe you're already in a relationship with Jesus and that's awesome. But if you're not, I want to invite you into a relationship. I want to introduce you to someone who loves you and cares for you. 
And I don't want you to just take that and be like, oh, that's awesome, I have this. But tonight, each of you will be receiving an invitation. We did this last year. But what this invitation is, it just has some Ignite information. And the goal of this simple little quarter sheet of paper is for you to take home with you. And tomorrow or next week is to give this to a friend, to give this to a teammate, to give this to a cousin, to give this to somebody who needs to be introduced to Jesus. This is a little paper that, like that lady said, come and see this man. This is your invitation to see. Come and hear about somebody. Come and hear about somebody who's impacted my life. Come and hear about the savior of the world who died for me, who loves me, and guess what? He loves you too. This simple little invitation could change someone's eternal life. Later on in that story, the woman, it says that after she went and told people, said, come and see, it said many people believed in Jesus from a simple invitation. So you're all gonna get one of these. And I encourage you right now to start thinking about who is it that you want to invite to Ignite next week? Who is it that you'd like to, it's information's not on here, but who is it that you'd like to invite to church on Sunday morning that we just talked about at 9.30? Who is it that you want to invite? And if you're like, hey, I got five people that I want to invite, I'll print more of these. We want the good news of Jesus to be shared with every single person on the planet. And it's hard to get to the entire planet before we can even move beyond our city. I had the opportunity this morning to be at Soccer Rapids High School, and I saw some of you this morning, which is super fun. Um, but there was a, a school assembly where someone came in and shared a message of hope with the school, and there were hundreds of students. And this is one of 14 different things that he's doing in our area at all these different schools. Hundreds, thousands of students. And I know majority of all of the youth pastors in the area, there are not all of those students are not accounted for that are at a Wednesday night Ignite youth group. You know what that means is that means they're students who need an invitation. There's students who you know. There's friends that you know. There's people who sit at your lunch table that you know. There's people on your sports teams in your neighborhoods that you know that could use an invitation, that would love and maybe they're going to say no. That's okay. But we're going to continue to invite, and we're going to continue to point people to Jesus because Jesus is all that really matters in this life, and this is our hope. This is our heart. And the goal is they're going to come back next week, and we're going to share the good news of who Jesus is with them. And we're going to tell them that they are loved, that they belong here, that they're forgiven, that they have a place where they can be who God has created them to be. So I encourage you, a simple invitation may seem silly, but it could change someone's eternal life just by saying, come and see. Can you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you, God, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We surrender to you. We ask that you show up, Jesus, in our lives. We ask a blessing over all of these invitations that we're gonna be sending out. We ask that you, God, are at work. We ask that these go out and that people have their heart churned to say, yeah, I'm going to go check it out. We know there's brand new first time students that are here tonight. God, help them to know that you love them and care for them. And this is a place where they can belong. God, I ask for protection and safety over all of our students. I ask that you give them boldness to share your love, to go and tell someone, hey, come and see this Jesus who has changed my life. We love you, Jesus. And we surrender it all in your name. And all God's people said, Amen, amen, amen.